All right, kicking it off, chapter nine. We're gonna hear about uh, wrapping weed and putting it in a suitcase and get on a commercial airline. Man, not once, not once. Not once did, did they get my bag. Uh, a couple people didn't get their bag when they got there. And uh, it never showed up. But that's another story. I think that's more, uh, more lies people told along the way. Dallas. Forget to to be the tone of ball. Blank, strange, and auto mail. Kick it off. Chapter nine. Burnt crosses. Tales from the South Side. Chapter nine. There's all my chapters up there right now. I'm gonna have a, uh, have a YouTube page uh, off of sub page off of my page. When I get get all these uh, seventeen chapters done. So after today, there's eight more chapters. Of the story so anybody that's uh, stayed with me or watched any of these or supports me I, I really need your fucking help uh, I can't tell you how I had that that test today for my MS for the at the aging center uh, let me just say that it was pretty grueling uh, pretty stressful and uh, let's just say uh, I, I done got it over with but I don't know what's going to happen when it goes to my attorneys and then it goes back to disability. I really can't work. I need some fucking help, okay? And and if if if, if, and if, and if anybody believed in me when I didn't rip anybody off $3,000 and I paid them back a year later when I was 20 years old and if, you, if people that believed in me then, if those people still believe in me, I need your help. I really do. Okay, get into chapter 9. Oh, I did chapter nine. Let me fucking see this shit. Chapter ten. 
Chapter 9 was last night. There it is. Chapter 10. I even had the bookmark on it. Believe it or not. To believe in yourself can get a person through some of the most trying times in your life. The phone calls at work from Murph every couple of days would get frustrating in the summer of 87. All I could do was say that I fucked up, but in time I would make it right. Just give me time, I told him. If it weren't for Murph's persistence, Murph and I might just, might just have given up. He was a guy so adamant about getting his money back, he had no choice but to believe in me. Come to find out, Murph only had a $500 stake in the deal. The rest belonged to Pat Willie and Paul Rankin, twelve fifty dollars apiece. These guys, Pat and Paul, were never going to be players. It was Murph that was representing their interest. It was Murph that believed in me and I had to clear my name back home. Somehow, some way, someday. Tim had headed back to Chicago after they let him out of Pima County Jail sometime late May of 87. Apparently, his charges in Cook County, Illinois, weren't worth the extradition, so once he was out, he was headed back to Chicago to try and raise and collect some money. My brother, the lobster and me, also got evicted from our house for lack of payment on the rent. The power had been shut off, and we were being... We were living in the dark ages, we would joke. Finally, securing a three-bedroom apartment on the far way east side of Tucson in June, I at least had lights and had hot water again after a month in the dark ages. Paul, my brother, and Johnny Lobster spent most of their time at their girlfriends, so I literally had the place to myself. That summer in 87 was a true test of, of my will. Knowing I was at the cusp of greatness, but being held back by my poor decisions. I spent a lot of time hanging out with Lori, a good-looking blo good blonde cashier, 27 years old, who had just gotten divorced. Lori had two kids, and no way was I ready to be a stepdad. We both had a craving for cocaine and conversation. And guys at work always wanted me to come out and guys at work always wanted to come over and claim that me and Lori were fucking. We weren't. We just hung out a lot, and she was a good friend. I just sat back and watched the endless parade of losers she would date or live with. I was really just intimidated at first because she was seven years older than me. But at 20, I could count the number of women I had fucked on one hand. I needed practice to be with her. I had to be a man. Our friendship really... grew that summer and she remains a friend to this day even though we haven't spoken in, in now over 23 years i no longer live in tucson a big reason why having no car again i had to junk it for 50 bones i took the sun trying to work every day and would bum bus rides home after work I worked the 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. 
in the produce department. So the bus didn't run when I got off of work. Somehow I would always find a ride home. Some nights I would walk as far as I could and my friend Scotty, who is my brother's best friend, who also worked at another Safeway, would pick me up as I headed home from work from one Safeway store across town. In my mind, over and over, I had it all planned. If I ever could get another break, I would pay those guys back off in Iowa, and we would all laugh about it, what happened. It would be so easy. So I set out to build my cash flow. I shipped Sean a half a pound for starters. It took two weeks to pay me and just say my $300 wasn't going to return $3,000 overnight. It turned into $600, but that was it. I blew some profit on Coke, bought another half a pound, shipped it to Sean, and waited for a quick return. This time, it took three weeks, not a very quick return. I faced the reality that paying these guys back and clearing my name would have to be done on a larger scale. I was really ready to give up by August. If it weren't for a knock on the door, I would get the next day. I remember it was the first Saturday of August, and right before Lori and I had sat up most of the night doing coke and drinking. I am crashed on my couch, and after she left at 4 a.m., I don't know, we usually wake up until after 2 on Saturday afternoons. Boom, boom, boom is what I awakened to at 11 a.m. As I rushed, as I rubbed my eyes and dragged to the door, I thought to myself, who the fuck could be banging on the door? I put my left off to a peak hole. It was fucking Mr. Tim. I opened the door. Ray J, I bet you never thought you would see me again, Tim says. We're going to get done, things done right this time. Let me find... Let me in this fucking apartment, Lamo. I stood there stunned as the glare of the sun in my eyes. Get the fuck in here, asshole, I told him, and shut the door. Tim, the fuck's back there in Iowa. They want their money, and I need to pay them back. I'm glad you're here, I said. And then he said, they'll get their money. First, I gotta score some pounds. I brought this, this guy from Chicago who wants to play. Where the fuck is pussy Ron, out? Ron at, Tim would ask. I know where he lives. Why the fuck are you going to deal with him, I, I question. Had my time finally arrived, or would it be just be more bullshit? Not yet. It was Tim who had the guy ready to back him. So again, it was Tim show all over again. Most Saturday nights I had to work. A change in schedule gave me the day off. Go get in the shower. What's wrong, Ray J? Doing the poopy last night, Tim required. What the, the fuck do you think, I told him. Let's go find Ron a pain, I said. I feel like inflicting some pain on that fuck, Tim said. When I returned from the shower, Tim would tell me of this guy he had waiting back at the Best Western off Albernine. He was a coke dealer back in Chicago, but he wanted to move his money in another direction. He had the cash with him. For a test run, Tim was going to buy 15 pounds at 750 a pop. Tim wanted to get the elbows at around $500 per and then use the, the money he made to buy five more for himself. This would net him around 5 k off the deal and he could return as soon as possible, he said. I would get my shot 
But first we needed to get to 20 pounds, Tim would promise. I had no choice. There are no signed contracts in selling dope. It comes down to your word. Or as someone once said, it's all bullshit till it walks in the door. So he set out that morning in the rental car Tim was in. Seen fucking George around? Tim asked, referring to Jorge. Only one time at the store, he came in one night with Armando so I could get, said I could get some work if I paid him $300 I owed him. Told me to find him over at Armando's apartment. Went by there a week later and fucking Armando had moved back to Mexico or some shit. The manager from his apartment was there cleaning and when I stopped by and he told me this is what he told me and then I responded yeah and fucking Ron moved let's go by and see him I know where he's at so how did you find out where he lives Tim wondered my bro seen him Moving into the duplexes one day where a friend of his lived. I figured he still had my black and white TV. I let him borrow for a while when he had to sell his. He still got our furniture, I told him. When Tim got kicked out of the house, he was running down the road from me. Told Tim he, he would hold it for him. It was a nice little sectional. And Tim had bought it a couple months before he had to move out. Well, if Ron could come give me the 20 pounds, he can have the furniture, Tim said. And as he sat silent on the way over to Ron's. Look, Tim. I say... You give me that furniture, the way I see it, you owe me at least $1,500 I put up paying back the wizard. I still owe these guys and fucking Ron. I don't trust him. I'll take you by his house, but I'm waiting in the car, I explain. Let's just get to 20 then I can worry about your problems, Tim responded. The one thing I started to discover about people that sometimes they are only concerned about themselves. For Tim, it was about his agenda to make money, not paying me back. He, when the only choice you have is trusting people, you have no other choice. As I sat in the car, as Tim went into Ron's house, I didn't count on him having a new connection. Since my helping Tim was that of showing him where Ron lived, it wouldn't be long till I was cut out of the picture. So what's going on, Rayman? said Ron as he approached me at the car window. What, you too, too good to come in and say hi? As Ron put his hand out on my shoulder. No. I just want to pay my people back, I implied. Ray J. Ron's going to make it right for me. Settle down, Tim tells me. Now, we was me for the first time. I shut up and rode back with Tim to the Best Western. As we pulled away back from the road, Tim wasn't saying nothing. So I broke the ice. Looks like Ron's going to take care of you. You guys acting like best friends now, Tim replied. All he had to do was make one call, and his guy will be showing up with the sample at 2 o'clock. I need you to hang out with my buddy at the hotel so I, until I get back. Don't tell this guy I owe you money. He's back in this shit, so don't make me look bad. Just hang by the pool 
and get some lunch. So there I was, babysitting this guy, keeping him on ice until Tim would come back. For Tim, things went off without a hitch. Ron's guy provided the 20 pounds. Tim paid the cash. Ray J, what do you say we park this over here at your apartment to do with it here? Tim asked me. You know, Ray J, what do you say we pack this over at your apartment? Too hot to do it at the hotel. He was right when it comes to packing weed before you smuggle it. A hotel room is definitely a bust. So before we left the hotel room, Tim flips me a hundred dollar bill, a Benjamin, a Benny, a C note. From what now on, you owe me fourteen hundred dollars. I asked Tim. No, that's for hooking me up with Ron. You'll get the other money. Don't worry about that now, Tim answered. Well, Tim and his buddy split up the weed into five pound bundles. I was the errand boy who would go get the supplies they needed. I had packed with Tim a few times before, so before Tim could tell me what they needed, I was on the way to the grocery store. To wrap the bundles that tight, it would take eight boxes of 200 feet plastic wrap. Never saran wrap, glad wrap. Each five pound bundle would be lined with a deodorant scent of kitchen bags, then wrapped again. Then a bundle would be tightly wound. Baby powder would be next. After baby powder was completely applied and covered on all sides, the bundle was wrapped again. By the time the process was done, the dogs couldn't smell it. It was a proven method. All these people that might have used coffee to cover their smell, weed smell would get busted. Using baby powder was a proven method. By 7 o'clock, the wrapping was done. The friend wanted to go back to the hotel and rest up for the flight the following afternoon. Jim would go back with him, but promised to be back in a week. I told him, good luck and be careful. See you in a week. I had thought my time had finally arrived. By the time Tim would return to Tucson to re-up, I had already told Murphy that I would be repaid and be a little more patient. This time, Tim would call me from a hotel after all the weed was wrapped and packed. I felt slighted because it was obvious Tim no longer needed my help, but I needed his. I told He told me to catch a cab and he would talk to me when I got there. At least the motherfucker offered to pay for my cab. Ron had hooked him up with another 20 pounds. This time, Tim had a 10 pound share of the deal. His new partner was taking the other 10. Tim's plan again was to return with his 10K, then buy 20 and give something my way. We sat in the jacuzzi at the hotel and smoked some killer skunk. So Tim, why not give me three pounds of your 20 and call it even, I asked. We could probably do that, said Tim, but if you wait a little longer, I'm going to be large and I'll be ready to expand in Iowa by then. So like an idiot, I believed him and decided to just wait my turn. They're here about uh, me in a position to uh, get them boys in Iowa City paid back that I owe them $3,000.
And then my fucking friend who I helped out, who fucking started the fucking whole thing anyway, decided fucking he didn't want to fucking pay me. So I had to figure out another option. So tune in for the next chapter. Talk to you soon.